On section 10.4, we're doing a one-way analysis of variance. It's abbreviated ANOVA for analysis of variance. And uh, this is used a good bit. Anytime uh, you're wanting to compare the uh, means from three or more populations to see if any of them are significantly different, you use the ANOVA test. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, again, three or more use the ANOVA test, and they have to be different groups. Uh, no before and after type of thing or anything like that. Now, if you only have two means and you're comparing them, that takes us back to section 8.1 where you're doing the unpaired t-test. If you have three or more, then you'll be needing to run the ANOVA test. Uh, it says the table below shows the annual amount spent on reading for a random sample of American consumers from four regions. Check to see if the mean amount of money spent on reading in any of the four regions is significantly different than the others and summarize the most significant alpha level. We have to assume that the amount spent on reading at each location is normally distributed since we uh, don't have that large of a sample here on at any location. So what I did is I went to the data sheet on the Excel sheet and I copied from the last sheet uh, the data called um, on the data sheet this data for section 10.4. Then I uh, went back to the ANOVA sheet here and I went to where we can put in our data and this can handle up to 10 groups so that's a lot of groups right there and I just went right here and did a cop, uh, pay special as uh, values and got my data in there. Now once you get your data in there it calculates a lot of things over here that it's going to copy and pay special over here for you. But before you do that, after you know, before you click that button to copy the values put in the number of groups right here that you have. That's critical. So we have four groups, so you put four right there, and then you click the button, and it copies all your information over. So here's the mean of each of those groups. And while it looks like, you know, the uh, average amount spent in reading in Region 4 is significantly greater than the amount in Region 3, that's not the case. Because if we look down here at the p-value, um, the p-value is 0.215, and that's greater than any alpha level you would use, including even the 0.1 alpha level. You wouldn't reject that null hypothesis. And uh, we can see, do not reject. That p-value is huge. And uh, this uses the F distribution. And uh, the F distribution is not a symmetric curve. It looks like this. And um, here's the rejection region, and here's your test statistic, and it didn't fall in the test uh, in the rejection region. So your summary for this problem would be at any alpha level I was unable to show that the average amount spent on reading at any of the locations is significantly different than any of the other locations. Now you may have noticed we used the uh, F test rather than a Z or a T or even a chi-square and uh, the uh, uh, Excel automatically calculates the critical F value and the F test statistics. But you may need to report these sometimes, let's say if you're writing a paper or something like that. Well, the uh, F test statistic is reported by typing the letter F, italic, then the number of groups minus one, comma, the number of uh, sampled minus the number of groups. So for the previous example, there was four groups and there was 27 people sampled. So the F test statistic would be reported as F parentheses, since there was four groups, four minus one is three, comma, the number of sampled, which is 27, minus the number of groups, 27 minus four is 23. And what was that uh, test statistic? I believe it was 1.61. And the p-value was greater than 0.1. And we can see that here. If we check our test statistic here, it was about 1.61, rounded to the nearest hundredth. And our p-value was greater than 0.1. Um, now, the critical f-value that determines what, you know, your rejection region, well, uh, you'd have to, the Excel automatically gives that to you. Right here is your critical F value. Let's see, critical F value 2.33. Now, if you didn't have Excel, then you'd have to look this up on an F table. And I have part of an F table here. And F tables uh, aren't in this book, but they would, uh, because there's so many, you'd have to have an F table for every alpha level. And you have the numerator degrees of freedom, which is your number of groups minus one, which is three. 
and then you have your denominator degrees of freedom here, which is your number of uh, people sampled minus your number of groups, which I believe was uh, 23 is what we're looking for there. And so since we don't have 23 listed on this table, the best we can do is this one at 20, and we get 2.38. So that's a that's all you can do when you use tables is get the approximate critical value of 2.38. The actual critical value is 2.338, not much difference, but uh, the Excel one has the exact value.